Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 50 years of sharing God's unconditional love and grace. And now, Andrew continues teaching from the life-changing Word of God about grace, the power of the gospel. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is the beginning of my fourth week of teaching through the book of Romans, and I tell you, this has been powerful. These verses have totally changed my life. The truth revealed here by the Apostle Paul talking about the gospel has just totally transformed me. And I tell you, as I've taught through this, it has blessed me all over again. I believe that there are thousands, maybe tens or hundreds of thousands of people receiving the truth about what the true gospel is. And I tell you, if you ever get hold of this, it's just like Paul said in Romans 1, 16, that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It releases God's power in your life. If your Christian life seems powerless, you know that God can do things, but He's not doing it in your life, you need a revelation of this gospel. This is powerful. And again, let me mention all of the materials. I've got this book that I've written on this subject. I've got a commentary that I wrote uh, uh, 25, 30 years ago on the book of Romans. I've got CDs, DVDs, and we've got a study guide that is specifically designed to teach Bible studies and help share these truths with other people. So we'll be advertising all of that. And we are now into the very last couple of verses of Romans chapter 5. And this is the beginning of my fourth week of teaching on this. So I'm not going through this really, really slow. I could have spent a lot more time, but I'm also not rushing through it. And there's a lot of things that we've already covered. There's no way I can go back and catch you up on everything I've said. So please go to our website. You can watch the programs free of charge on our website. You can get all of the past issues. You can also get all of these materials. The CDs are available free of charge. You can download them on the website. The DVDs are available. It's just a, it's a great way to get hold of this, but you need to get all of this in its context. I'm aware that not every person watches every single day. And so if you just listen to one program, you can benefit from that, but it makes such a bigger impact on you if you get it in its context. So we're now down to Romans chapter 5 and in verse 20. It says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And if you've been with me through this whole series, uh, I've, I've, tr I've made this point many times because Paul made it many times in the book of Romans, but it's showing you that God deals with you totally based on what Jesus did for you and all you've got to do is receive it by grace. And that leads to, well, then why the law? Well, the law was given because people were just allowing sin to run amok. It was destroying the human race. It was destroying individual lives. So God gave the law, just like this says, that, the, that sin might abound. God did not give the law to set you free from sin, but to actually let sin dominate you. That's what it says over in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56, that the strength of sin is the law. And we've used a lot of these scriptures already, but the Lord strengthened sin. He didn't strengthen you in your battle against sin. He strengthened sin in its battle against you. And somebody might say, why would God do that? Because the truth was sin had already beaten you, but people weren't aware of it. They were comparing themselves among themselves and thinking, well, I'm as good as this person. God's going to have to accept me. And they were deceived. They didn't understand how deadly sin was. So God gave the law, and when the law came, sin revived, and I died. That is a quotation here from Romans chapter 7. And it says in verse 9, For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the law was given to make sin abound. But it says here that where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Grace has always been the way that people had relationship with God. Even David knew this. After his sin was Bathsheba, where he committed adultery and then murdered Bathsheba's husband to cover up his adultery, the prophet came and revealed his sin to him, and he wrote Psalms chapter 51 in repentance over his sin. And he said there, he says, God, 
I WOULD GIVE SACRIFICE AND OFFERING IF THAT'S WHAT YOU DESIRED, BUT THAT'S NOT WHAT YOU WANT. WHAT YOU WANT IS A BROKEN AND A CONTRITE HEART. IN OTHER WORDS, HE SAYS, I WOULD OPERATE IN THE LAW AND OFFER THESE OFFERINGS IF THAT REALLY DID ANYTHING, BUT HE SAYS, I KNOW THAT THEY'RE JUST SYMBOLIC. THIS IS WHAT IT SAYS IN HEBREWS CHAPTER 9. THEY WERE JUST TYPES AND SHADOWS, SYMBOLISMS, UNTIL THE REAL THING, THE SACRIFICE OF JESUS COULD COME. AND SO DAVID SAID IN PSALMS CHAPTER 51, HE SAYS, WHAT YOU REALLY WANT IS A BROKEN AND A CONTRITE HEART. SO EVEN DAVID, UNDER THE LAW, HE WAS OPERATING IN GRACE. PEOPLE HAVE ALWAYS HAD RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD BY GRACE. GOD IS SO HOLY, HE IS SO AWESOME, HE IS SO MIGHTY THAT NOBODY, NOBODY, NOBODY IN THE BIBLE, NOT YOU, NOT ME, NOBODY CAN EVER HAVE A RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD BASED ON YOUR GOODNESS. AND THE GOOD NEWS IS THAT GOD IS WILLING TO HAVE RELATIONSHIP WITH US BASED TOTALLY UPON GRACE JUST BECAUSE HE'S A GOOD, MERCIFUL GOD, BUT BEFORE HE CAN DO THAT, HE'S GOT TO HAVE YOU QUIT PROMOTING YOURSELF AND TRUSTING IN YOUR OWN SELF. SO THE LAW WAS GIVEN TO MAKE SIN ABOUND, TO MAKE SIN COME ALIVE, TO LET, TO STRENGTHEN SIN AND LET SIN HAVE DOMINION OVER YOU. BUT WHERE SIN ABOUNDED, GRACE DID MUCH MORE ABOUND, IN VERSE 21, THAT AS SIN HATH REIGNED UNTO DEATH, EVEN SO MIGHT GRACE REIGN THROUGH RIGHTEOUSNESS UNTO ETERNAL LIFE BY JESUS CHRIST OUR LORD. HERE'S ANOTHER COMPARISON, THAT BEFORE YOU GET BORN AGAIN, SIN REIGNED. THAT MEANS IT RULED, IT DOMINATED UNTO DEATH. ROMANS 6, 23 SAYS THE WAGES OF SIN IS DEATH. THE RESULT OF SIN IS DEATH. AND SO BEFORE JESUS CAME, SIN REIGNED, IT RULED, IT CONTROLLED, IT DOMINATED AND PRODUCED <coughs> DEATH IN EVERY SINGLE ONE OF US. BUT IT SAYS NOW, EVEN SO MIGHT GRACE REIGN, CONTROL, DOMINATE, RULE UNTO ETERNAL LIFE, BUT IT'S THROUGH RIGHTEOUSNESS. THIS WORD RIGHTEOUSNESS IS A RELIGIOUS WORD THAT SOMETIMES PEOPLE LOSE SIGHT OF WHAT IT MEANS, BUT IT'S A SIMPLE WAY OF SAYING IT IS. IT'S JUST THROUGH RIGHT STANDING WITH GOD. IF YOU UNDERSTAND THAT YOU ARE NOW RIGHT WITH GOD, THAT GOD IS PLEASED WITH YOU, NOT THROUGH WHAT YOU'VE DONE, BUT THROUGH WHAT JESUS DID FOR YOU, AND ALL YOU'VE GOT TO DO IS BY FAITH REACH OUT AND TAKE IT AS A GIFT. YOU KNOW, IF I WENT AND PUT A MILLION DOLLARS IN YOUR BANK ACCOUNT, AND I MEAN, IT WAS YOURS, AND I GAVE IT TO YOU, IT WAS A DONE DEAL. BUT IF YOU DIDN'T BELIEVE THAT YOU HAD IT, AND IF YOU DIDN'T WRITE A CHECK, OR IF YOU DIDN'T GO MAKE A WITHDRAWAL, I COULD PUT THAT MONEY IN YOUR ACCOUNT AND IT COULD BE THERE, BUT IT WOULDN'T BENEFIT YOU. YOU COULD STILL BE LIVING ON THE STREET. YOU COULD STILL GO WITHOUT FOOD. YOU COULD STILL BE DRIVING AN OLD BEAT UP CAR you, IF YOU DIDN'T TAKE ADVANTAGE OF IT. AND THIS IS WHAT IT'S TALKING ABOUT. THROUGH GRACE, GOD HAS GIVEN US EVERYTHING, BUT NOW you, IT'S THROUGH YOU UNDERSTANDING WHAT HE'S DONE AND THAT YOU ARE RIGHT AND THAT YOU HAVE PRIVILEGES NOW. AND IF YOU DO THAT, THEN IT WILL RELEASE THIS LIFE THAT HE'S GIVEN UNTO YOU. SO GRACE NOW REIGNS THROUGH RIGHTEOUSNESS, THROUGH UNDERSTANDING YOUR RIGHT STANDING WITH GOD UNTO ETERNAL LIFE BY JESUS CHRIST OUR LORD. AND SO THE NEXT VERSE, ROMANS CHAPTER 6, VERSE 1. THIS IS POWERFUL. ROMANS CHAPTER 6 IS AN ANSWER TO, I KNOW, A LOT OF QUESTIONS THAT YOU'VE HAD AS YOU'VE BEEN GOING THROUGH THIS SERIES WITH ME. IF YOU'VE UNDERSTOOD AND LISTENED TO MY TEACHING OVER THE LAST THREE WEEKS AND THE FIRST FIVE CHAPTERS OF THE BOOK OF ROMANS WHERE HE SAYS IT'S THE GOOD NEWS THAT GOD LOVES YOU IN SPITE OF YOUR FAILURES, IN SPITE OF YOUR BAD PERFORMANCE. IT'S NOT BASED ON YOUR PERFORMANCE. IT'S BY GRACE. AND WE SHOWED THAT ABRAHAM WAS JUSTIFIED IN THE SIGHT OF GOD AND DECLARED RIGHTEOUS BEFORE HE HAD DONE THE RIGHTEOUS ACT OF CIRCUMCISION. HE WAS JUST JUSTIFIED BECAUSE OF FAITH. WE USED DAVID AS AN EXAMPLE AND ON AND ON. IF YOU UNDERSTAND THIS, THEN A LOGICAL QUESTION SHOULD BE, CAN I JUST LIVE IN SIN? IF YOU'RE SAYING THAT GOD DOESN'T HOLD MY SINS, HE'S NOT IMPUTING SINS UNTO ME, CAN I JUST GO LIVE IN SIN AS A CHRISTIAN? ABSOLUTELY NOT, BUT THAT IS A LOGICAL QUESTION, AND THAT'S EXACTLY WHAT PAUL DEALS WITH RIGHT HERE. IN VERSE 1, IT SAYS, WHAT SHALL WE SAY THEN? SHALL WE CONTINUE IN SIN THAT GRACE MAY ABOUND? AND HIS ANSWER IN VERSE 2 IS, GOD FORBID. DID YOU KNOW IN THE GREEK THIS IS AS CLOSE TO PROFANITY AS YOU COULD GET? I MEAN, IT IS LIKE ABSOLUTELY NOT. MATTER OF FACT, ONE OF THE TRANSLATIONS THAT I'VE READ <laughs> 
I'm not even going to say what they say, but it's, you know, blackety. No, that's not what I'm saying. That's the way it was translated. And that's really in the Greek here, the point that's being made. This is an absolute, unqualified negative. No, absolutely not. That's not what he's saying. But let me point this out. Paul said this right here in chapter 6, verse 1. He says it again down here in this same chapter in verse 15. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. And twice in the book of Galatians when he's dealing with similar topics, he asked the same thing. Are, are we, can we just go live in sin then? So here's my point. The gospel that Paul preached cause people to constantly say, are you just saying that we can go live in sin because of the grace of God? No, that's not what Paul was saying. No, that's not what I'm saying. But that is a logical question. And I dare to say that the vast majority of people watching this program who have been in church never ask that question because the things that you're hearing that are being called the gospel is God's angry. God won't bless you. God won't answer your prayers if you don't do these things. God is going to quit fellowshipping with you. God will break off a relationship and stuff. That's what most people are saying. And because of that, it never, the question never comes up. Are you just saying that because of the grace of God, I can go live in sin? That doesn't even come up in most people's experience because they aren't preaching the same gospel that Paul preached. When you preach the same gospel that Paul preached, people are going to think, are you saying that sin, I can just live in sin and everything's okay? No, that's not what we're saying, but that does need to be explained. And that's what Paul deals with here in Romans chapter 6. So he gives two reasons here in Romans chapter 6. I'll summarize this and then we'll go back and look at it in detail. But the first reason that he gives in verse 2, he says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? He shows that when you get born again, you are created new on the inside and you are dead to sin. That does not mean that you can't sin, but it means that you are separated from sin. You no longer have this sin nature controlling you and dominating you. As he said in just the previous verses, that sin reigned unto death. Sin was in control. Sin was like a dictator. But when you get born again, you are separated from that old nature, that old man. It's dead. You are dead to sin, and now you should live unto righteousness. So the first reason he gives why you don't live in sin is because it's not your nature to sin anymore. That needs some explanation. We'll come back to that. And then the second reason that he gives here in Romans chapter 6 is in verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So the second reason he gives is that you don't want to live in sin because it gives Satan an inroad. You, it's like throwing the door open and inviting the devil in. You don't lose your salvation, but you just give Satan a free shot at you. And the Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, that the thief, talking about the devil, comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. If you go out and live in sin, you are giving Satan a free shot at you, and I guarantee you he's going to try and steal, kill, and to destroy you. So you don't want that. God will still love you. He is dealing with you by grace, but there are consequences to your actions. So in Romans chapter 6, he gives two reasons. One, you have a new nature and you are now dead to sin. The second reason, you do not want to give Satan an opportunity against you. And you do give Satan legal right to come into your life when you go out and willfully live in sin. Boy, those are strong statements right there. But if you understand this properly, this will give the answer to, are you saying that we can just go live in sin? Absolutely not. I'm saying that God will still love you if you live in sin. It doesn't affect God's attitude towards you, but sin will affect your attitude towards God. Sin will give Satan an inroad into your life. Sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. You do not want to live in sin. But as a Christian, if you are truly born again, God is not imputing your sin unto you, and God will love you even when you are a sinner. 
And if somebody watching this program says, oh, man, this is awesome news. You just gave me the right to go live in sin. You gave me a license to live in sin. Well, let me say that you were sinning pretty good without a license. What I'm saying doesn't for set people free to sin. It sets you free from sin. Once you understand the great love and the price that Jesus paid to make you right in the sight of God, man, love will captivate you and cause you to live a holier life than condemnation ever caused you to live. You know, I'm glad that God has given me this revelation and has called me to preach on the grace of God for many reasons. Number one, just because it's blessed me so much and it's set me free and I have a great relationship with God even though I'm not the perfect person. So I appreciate it for this, but I'm also glad because when, I, when you go to talking about the grace of God, you're going to have people condemn you and criticize you. I can guarantee you I will get a lot of criticism over what I'm teaching about the grace of God. I always do. And there will be people criticizing me. Those of you who accept this and are rejoicing at it and bearing witness, man, I'd appreciate it if you'd write or call or say something nice to counteract all of the criticism that I get. But when people criticize you, one of the things that they will say often is that, well, you just preach this greasy grace so that you can go live in sin. And you know what? I'm glad that God gave me the opportunity to preach grace because you can't say that about me. I LIVED A HOLIER LIFE THAN THE VAST MAJORITY OF PEOPLE THAT ARE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM. YOU KNOW, BY THE TIME YOU SEE THIS PROGRAM, I'M GOING TO BE JUST ABOUT 69 YEARS OLD. Now, I'VE NEVER USED A WORD OF PROFANITY IN MY LIFE. I'VE NEVER TAKEN A DRINK OF LIQUOR. I'VE NEVER SMOKED A CIGARETTE. I'VE NEVER TASTED COFFEE. Man, and I know some of you are thinking, coffee, what are you saying about it? There's nothing wrong with coffee. No, you got a scripture that says you can drink any deadly thing and it shall not harm you. So I'm just saying I've lived a separated holy life and you can't accuse me of preaching on grace so that I can go out and live in sin. That's not true. It says the grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Matter of fact, that's right here. In, uh, well, here's a verse in Romans 6, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Sin actually has dominion when you're under the law, but when you're under grace, it breaks the dominion. And then in Titus chapter 2, verse 12, it says, the grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. If you truly understand the true gospel and you receive this love from God, it will set you free from sin, not free to sin. Listen to this in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. It says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Then verse 2 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, BUT WE KNOW THAT WHEN HE SHALL APPEAR, WE SHALL BE LIKE HIM, FOR WE SHALL SEE HIM AS, as HE IS. AND LOOK AT THIS. 1 JOHN chapter 3, VERSE 3 SAYS, AND EVERY MAN, EVERY MAN, NOT MOST, NOT A LOT, NOT THE MAJORITY, EVERY MAN THAT HATH THIS HOPE ABOUT THE LOVE OF GOD AND BEING LIKE HIM, IN HIM PURIFIETH HIMSELF EVEN AS HE IS PURE. IF A PERSON WOULD say, TAKE WHAT PAUL WAS SAYING, WHAT I'M SAYING, AND SAY, MAN, THIS IS GREAT. I CAN GO LIVE IN SIN. THEN YOU DON'T HAVE THIS HOPE IN HIM. YOU HAVEN'T REALLY RECEIVED THE LOVE OF GOD. YOU'RE JUST RELIGIOUS. IF YOU ARE TRULY BORN AGAIN, YOU AREN'T LOOKING FOR AN EXCUSE TO SIN. YOU ARE WANTING TO BE FREE FROM SIN, AND THIS WILL SET YOU FREE FROM THAT SIN. ANYBODY WHO WOULD TAKE THESE STATEMENTS OF PAUL AND THAT I'M REPEATING HERE IN TEACHING AND SAY, MAN, I CAN GO LIVE IN SIN BECAUSE OF THE GRACE OF GOD. YOU AREN'T BORN AGAIN. YOU DON'T HAVE A NEW NATURE. YOU'VE STILL GOT AN OLD NATURE AND YOU'RE JUST USING THIS AS A JUSTIFICATION TO LET YOUR SINFUL NATURE DOMINATE YOU. BUT IF YOU'RE TRULY BORN OF GOD, IT SAYS IN ROMANS CHAPTER 6, VERSE 1, THAT SHALL WE CONTINUE IN SIN THAT GRACE MAY ABOUND? GOD FORBID. HOW SHALL WE THAT ARE DEAD TO SIN LIVE ANY LONGER THEREIN? WHEN YOU GOT BORN AGAIN, YOU HAD A NATURE ON THE INSIDE OF YOU BEFORE YOU GOT SAVED THAT WAS DEAD TO GOD. YOU KNOW, THE WORD DEAD TO US MEANS SOMETHING DIFFERENT THAN WHAT IT MEANS TO GOD. WHEN YOU TALK ABOUT BEING DEAD HERE, A PERSON, THAT BASICALLY MEANS THAT YOU'VE CEASED TO EXIST. YOU AREN'T ANYMORE. BUT IN THE BIBLE, THAT'S NEVER WHAT DEATH MEANT. 
Yeah, the Lord told Adam that in the day you eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. He didn't physically die until 930 years later, but he died that day spiritually. He was separated from God. That's what the word death means from God. It's separation. When a person physically dies, they don't cease to exist. They still exist. The Bible teaches that our spirit and our soul go to God. It says in James chapter 2, verse 26, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So your spirit leaving your body is what causes death, and it's separation. Your spirit doesn't cease to exist. It just either goes into the presence of God or it goes into hell, but you still continue to exist. Death is not ceasing to exist. It's separation. AND WHEN YOU WERE BORN DEAD IN TRESPASSES AND SINS, I'VE ALREADY USED THAT VERSE A NUMBER OF TIMES OUT OF EPHESIANS AND OTHER PLACES, IT DOESN'T MEAN THAT YOUR SPIRIT IS DEAD IN THE SENSE THAT IT'S NON-FUNCTIONAL. IT STILL IS ALIVE. IT FUNCTIONS, BUT IT'S FUNCTIONING INDEPENDENT, SEPARATED FROM GOD. AND WHEN IT SAYS HERE THAT YOU ARE NOW DEAD TO SIN, THAT DOESN'T MEAN THAT YOU CAN'T SIN, BUT IT MEANS THAT YOU ARE NO LONGER ALIVE TO SIN. YOU ARE NO LONGER CONTROLLED BY SIN. YOU HAVE BEEN SEPARATED FROM THAT SIN NATURE, FROM THE CORRUPTION THAT YOU INHERITED THROUGH ADAM, AND YOU ARE NOW DEAD, SEPARATED TO THAT OLD SIN NATURE. I'M GOING TO SAY SOMETHING RIGHT HERE THAT I DON'T HAVE TIME TO EXPLAIN TOTALLY ON TODAY'S PROGRAM, SO PLEASE LISTEN IN TOMORROW, GET THE MATERIALS, OR GO TO OUR WEBSITE AND GET THE FULL EXPLANATION OF THIS. BUT AS A WHOLE, THE BODY OF CHRIST BELIEVES THAT WE STILL HAVE A SINFUL NATURE. AND IF YOU LOOK IN THE NIV, THEY HAVE TOTALLY MISSED WHAT'S BEING SAID RIGHT HERE. THE NIV WILL TALK ABOUT THE SINFUL NATURE OF MAN, TALKING ABOUT A CHRISTIAN. BEFORE YOU GET BORN AGAIN, EVERYBODY HAD A SIN NATURE, BUT WHEN YOU GET BORN AGAIN, YOUR SIN NATURE IS GONE. IT DOES NOT EXIST. YOU DO NOT HAVE A SIN NATURE. YOU ARE DEAD TO SIN. AND this, IT'S GOING TO SAY THIS A NUMBER OF DIFFERENT TIMES HERE IN ROMANS CHAPTER 6. NOW, I KNOW THAT WHAT I'M SAYING IS CONTRARY TO WHAT MOST OF YOU HAVE BEEN TAUGHT, BUT IF YOU WILL JUST STICK WITH ME AND GO THROUGH ROMANS CHAPTER 6, THIS WILL PROVE TO YOU THAT THIS IS WHAT IT'S SAYING. YOU DO NOT HAVE A SINFUL NATURE AND THEN A BORN-AGAIN HUMAN NATURE. I'VE HAD PEOPLE DESCRIBE IT LIKE THERE'S A WHITE DOG AND A BLACK DOG INSIDE OF YOU THAT ARE CONSTANTLY FIGHTING AND WHICHEVER ONE YOU FEED THE MOST WINS. AND THE POINT THAT THEY'RE MAKING IS YOU GOT TO BE FOCUSED ON WHO YOU ARE IN CHRIST, YOUR NEW NATURE AND STUFF. AND THERE ARE SOME TRUTHS TO BE MADE THERE, BUT THE BAD PART ABOUT THAT IS THAT YOU STILL ARE IDENTIFYING WITH SIN. THIS IS WHY I'M, not, I'm AGAINST SOME OF THESE THREE-STEP PROGRAMS, YOU KNOW, THAT WELL, ANYWAY, I'M NOT GOING TO SAY THAT BECAUSE I DON'T HAVE TIME TO DEFEND IT. BUT I'M JUST TELLING YOU, YOU ARE NOT AN OLD SINNER SAVED BY GRACE. YOU WERE AN OLD SINNER, BUT YOU GOT SAVED BY GRACE, AND NOW YOU ARE THE RIGHTEOUSNESS OF GOD. MAN, TUNE IN TOMORROW, AND I'M GOING TO SHARE SOME THINGS WITH YOU THAT WILL TRANSFORM YOUR LIFE. I'VE GOT ALL OF THIS WRITTEN IN THIS BOOK ENTITLED GRACE, THE POWER OF THE GOSPEL. I HAVE A HARDCOVER uh, LIFE FOR TODAY COMMENTARY ON THE BOOK OF ROMANS. WE'VE GOT TEACHING ON CD'S, DVD'S, AND THEN WE HAVE THIS STUDY GUIDE THAT YOU CAN ACTUALLY TEACH BIBLE STUDIES AND, and SHARE THESE TRUTHS WITH OTHER PEOPLE. IT'S VERY SIMPLE. OUR ANNOUNCER IS GOING TO SHARE ALL OF THIS WITH YOU, AND I ENCOURAGE YOU TO PLEASE GET THE MATERIALS AND JOIN ME AGAIN TOMORROW AS I CONTINUE THE GOSPEL TRUTH. ANDREW'S TEACHING ON GRACE HELPED US UNDERSTAND THAT GOD HAD ALREADY PROVIDED EVERYTHING BY GRACE and that we could access it by faith, and that it wasn't about what we had to do. It was about what Jesus had already done for us. Gain a greater understanding of what Jesus did for you through God's grace when you get Andrew's teaching on Romans titled, Grace, the Power of the Gospel. It's available in either a CD or a DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. You can also get this teaching as a book or a companion study guide available in either English or Spanish. Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. If you'd like a verse-by-verse -verse commentary on Romans, consider Andrew's Life for Today Study Bible and Commentary, Romans Edition. It includes 470 footnotes that will help you understand God's unconditional love and grace. 
Or if you prefer, all of these resources are available as part of the Romans Collection. It includes your choice of either the CD or DVD album, the book, the study guide, and the Life for Today Study Bible and Commentary, Romans Edition. Order the collection today, and while supplies last, you'll also receive a special Andrew Womack Ministries inscribed mug from our store. The Romans Collection has a catalog value of $124, but you can receive it today for just $75. The fourth audio teaching in today's series is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this fourth CD free of charge. You can order resources or become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Our helpline number is 719-635-1111. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. Our lives were turned right side up when we came to an Andrew Womack event back in 2006. Our daughter Hannah was just given two weeks to live, but at that conference she was prayed for and praise God she was miraculously healed and she's 100% well to this day. Since Hannah was healed, we found that there have been many people that have been healed at Andrew's events. It's not a question of will he heal you, he's already healed you. Andrew teaches because he's down to earth, um, th there's no um, false uh, teaching there. It's helped us be better people, it's, it's strengthened our relationship. The whole conference and everything that they're teaching has really opened my eyes. When you attend a Gospel Truth Conference, you're going to be inspired by powerful praise and worship with Charlie and Jill LeBlanc and Andrew teaching the life-changing Word of God. There are prayer ministers there as well. The next Gospel Truth Conference is in Portland, Oregon, March 15th through the 17th with guest speaker Creflo Dollar. Come expecting and join Andrew and Creflo at the next Gospel Truth Conference. Register today at awmi.net slash conferences. You know, if you would like to come to Karis Bible College, but you just can't bring it on yourself to leave where you are and move out here, I would like to let you know that we have extension schools all over the United States as well as many foreign countries. And uh, we have morning classes, night classes. We have Saturday classes where you meet just two Saturdays a month and do the rest by correspondence. There's many ways for you to take advantage. So go check out our website and see if there is a Karis Bible College close to you. As Karis continues to grow, new locations are constantly being added. Students are being equipped through the Word of God and grounded in the message of God's unconditional love and grace. With over 70 locations worldwide and brand new ones starting, there is a Karis waiting for you. Please go to karisbiblecollege.org slash mycampus to find a campus opening near you.